meta picks within the context of the jungle. Maybe not one that we see prioritized very often, but with two champions already banned away, not surprising. Sadly, 0-3 thus far for Inspired, a player who's still looking to show us more on champions outside the Olaf, as you mentioned earlier. One of the little things that's pretty cool about drafting Skarna into the Corky, while it's Corky's a very obvious target for Skarna to go towards, you see Corky, you kind of plug and play 280 carries with more expensive builds, two, three items where we talk about with Corky and most 80 carries. And then you have to add in a 1300 gold QSS as well. So for expensive builds that take a long time to come online, the fact that you're adding 1300 gold and 80 carry by just locking in Skarna alone does mean there's more time to play before the 80 carry itemization really comes online and makes it so much more difficult to deal with Cork. Yeah, and of course, paying that Skarner attack can, or Skarner attacks can always be frustrating. Now, the Nautilus, the Gragas may not need that quite as much, but if Splice do offer two more kind of vulnerable carry options in their respective solo lanes or bot lane, that's only going to get harder to pay for. Skarner very frustrating to deal with. But it feels like right now you already know what Splice's comp is going to look like. It's going to be front to back team fighting. You know, if they could get a Sejuani with this comp, we know it's banned, but very much strong frontlining and 280 carries, what you're thinking is going to come on here. A comp that very much is going to want to scale into the 25 to 35 minute phase. Adding on that extra time from the QSS tax could be relevant, but it does mean that Rogue should have an ability to attack the early game. Maybe the level six mark is where they can get a little bit frisky. Actually seeing a second round cannon ban on the red side here is Rogue. Aatrox as the first pick of the second round is seeming pretty on point. See if maybe that's something that Rogue are aware of as well, and it's something that they want to take away. Of course, Vizichachi has had a couple of heroic performances on the Aatrox, or rather on the Kennen, turning a lot of games around. But the Draven actually will be the ban away. A little bit of respect over to Kabe, wanting to take that option to disrupt the Rakan in lane. Out. Stand aside, of course, very strong into that matchup. But a Vladimir will be the final ban. So stopping a little bit of the team fighting power on the side of Rogue. Interestingly enough, Finn's Kled still up and available and something that Rogue would have the luxury of last pick counter picking if Splice pick a vulnerable matchup. And I'd be down to see some more Kled. Really fun champion that works in this meta very beautifully. Definitely looking for an AD carry on both sides unless we will see another Corky Flex the bot lane. If you want some lane presence, and also the potential for an earlier game power spike. That gold imbalance we're talking about of having to say, spend a bit extra on the QSS tax. Well, Ezreal spends his gold more efficiently than any other champion in the early game with how cheap his two item power spike is. So there is that real potential that those really particular timings, kind of the 11 to 18 minute mark here, could be an area that Rogue have drafted a bit of ascendancy. And I think for Rogue, important game for them to show that they've got more, that they are worthy of being that playoff contender. And playing around tight timings like that is a great way to show it. Folks, it's not going to happen. We saw it yesterday. Pretty sure it's been permabanned. The Kled might also be a troll hover. We'll have to find out. Would be an interesting denial pick, but not something I normally put in the wheelhouse to visit Chachi. Will be the GP with the Kai'Sa as well. The response to the Ezreal on the bottom side and will commit the Corky to the mid lane. Very interesting to see the GP come in. Usually when you draft Kai'Sa, we usually expect kind of a man immune build and then the ability to just kill her instinct to help a side laner, but you kind of need something to set that up. It's not usually the GP and you caught it earlier. Dracos, you alluded to it. This Look. is something that was always on the cards and it's another champion who kind of wants one core item, one and a half, two, and then that's where they're strongest. It's the later, it's not what they're looking for. Feels very much like it's gonna be a timing attack coming through from Rogue. Spice, meanwhile, gonna try to lose the minimum in the early game. And look, if you're Fizzy Chachi, maybe you're feeling a little bit comfortable, you got the oranges, but everyone else on this team, Papa, has to be absolutely terrified, because that Kled starts running in, the Skarner right behind him, you are not getting away from that duo. Paired up with Rakan, it goes from bad to worse. But as you mentioned, a lot of pressure now for Rogue to kind of build these advantages in the early game. They've got a draft set up to do so, but they still have to out-execute Splice. And the gold standard for Rogue is if they can find a way to control the enemy blue side jungle. I the jungle that is controlled by Splice between top lane and mid lane, and then always be threatening turret dives mid lane with first a charge coming in and then a suppression following it. There can be so much threat to roam a pushing advantage top side into mid lane destruction. Ooh, something we have to keep our eyes on. How can they play around? Is Xerxes with the Gragas the potential to disengage some of these plays? A lot of hard CC and jungle and support position, but the rest of the team potentially very vulnerable. Late game team fighting, a strength for both of these squads. We're going to have to find out who comes out on top.
Here we are, ladies and gentlemen, third game of the day. A reminder, big stakes for Splice. Winning here locks them in playoffs, and not only them, Fnatic fans, pay attention because it will lock Fnatic as well. Crucial for both of these teams to be secured at this stage. However, Rogue, all important for them to find every single win they can on this playoffs race. And that last bit of information, Splice's fan base has swelled to record numbers if it includes the entire massive <laughs> Fnatic fan base. So this is going to be a kind of a David versus Goliath in terms of public opinion. A lot of people want to see Splice pick up the win here. They probably come in as favorites, kind of vindicated from an overall very strong summer where they've cemented themselves as more than just a gatekeeper to playoffs or gatekeeper to top four as they've inevitably been over the years. But I'm going to focus on Rogue because they're the team here that really needs to make the action at certain timings. So how they get there, the mistakes they make, the good plays they make, it's kind of else Splice wins late game. It's not a hunch to zero in terms of that, but it certainly feels quite favored with how the lineups actually are. A lot of mid-range damage on the side of Rogue that can be heavily outranged by Corky and how much punishment that can come with the infinite scaling of champions like GP. So because of that, I'm really excited to see how Rogue try to attack. Because I think back to their game last week against Excel, where Rogue went for a team fighting drop, but took a lot of losses in terms of kind of 1v1 lanes, and then just was so far behind they could never actually enact those team fights. I feel like we're a bit more stable here. They haven't taken too many bold like lane assignments by any means. And thus, that kind of mid-game time should be ripe for them to attack. But for now, as we keep our eyes on the early game, Splice already putting down some early vision to make sure that they can keep eyes on exactly where the Skarner will be. You see Ping is going down on his location. Is they're reasonably sure that he has okay. now and engage on the bottom side. Will I burning? Slowly but surely the flash forward from North Garen. Oh, he wants it, and he's gonna get it. First blood for the Nihilus. Kind of looking for the follow-up. The CC is just so much damage. Vander now in trouble. The flash burn to take him to safety, but an explosive early play from Splice. Wow, that definitely throws a fork into this particular plan here from the side of Rogue for a level one kill come out bot lane assuming it was just a face check that they couldn't afford to make but 80 carry goes down all flashes down and suddenly jungle pathing whatever it was intended to be someone's gonna park bot lane and try to punish now we can take a look back see exactly what happened here perhaps an overstep around the level two mark and yeah, right now it's all super comfortable right max range hook almost threw a minion bended it like beckham around the left side and that burst if you can pat uh, passive uh, sorry proc the passive so early there the burst is so much that absolutely caught off guard is rogue spot lane and just incredibly difficult to play against. Cannot afford to get hit by the hook. The combination, as you mentioned, of the press, the attack on top of the plasma stacks, of which Norse Garen can instantly proc two on the back of a hook like that. Just difficult to deal with and a, a difficult reminder for Rogue to face down now. But not off to too bad of a start. We'll get Kaisa a bit faster than the tier. Good news is the gold went to Nautilus, so not necessarily ideal for the splice side, but Rogue have to be careful moving forward. And kills in lane are not as punishing as they once were because death timers were first made shorter and teleport has become the standard spell. So it's not like a 10 CS lead was also enacted over and above. Thankfully, Woolite will be happy that he still has an escape summoner in terms of an escape spell in terms of the arcane shift. So because of that, there is still going to be some competitive farming as in case you were forgetting <laughs> it. We got a big match coming up in a couple. Game five, Fnatic versus G2. Of course, Fnatic might already be locked for playoffs at this point, but the battle for top two will continue for many of our teams. G2 looking to lock that in. And of course, just pride, bragging rights. They're the two big ones. You guys know what it's all about. I don't have to tell you how hyped this matchup is, but I will say that that is not your time to go for a bathroom break, nor is now. Because any moment, Papa Smithy, any moment, and by any moment, I mean like in a minute and a half, these junglers can hit level six, and that's when I think people are going to start going down. Yeah, we set our expectations clear. The level six mark, especially for Rogue's side, is obviously going to be super important. We saw for a second Zerse going near top lane, and I thought it would be the kind of 6% of his time he spends top side. In case you guys don't know, Spice never send resources top. Is it actually always alone, good matchup or bad, but the deep ward they put down to spot the Krugs is a nice one to relieve pressure. There is a mirror ward from Rogue onto the bot lane Krugs as well. So <laughs> Krugs are gonna spot both junglers. Does mean laners can play up or sit back accordingly with this extra information. See if they do anything greater with it. For now, I imagine it'll just be a bit more comfortable here in the early landing phase. It's a bit uncertain 
To be clear, the top side ward onto the Skarn is actually super important. The cameraman caught the grouped minion wave being slow pushed, that massive wave being slow pushed into Vizichachi and top. Seeing the enemy jungler, he knows he's not being turret dive, and that's the most common set piece play of grouping up the minions, diving with your jungler, and has the most high chance of succeeding in a scenario like that. Seeing Skarner, no worries there. He would pick up as much of the experience in CS he can potentially get away with, so important deep ward. That was a good job of backing up by Xerse. Now see if Xerse wants to go for anything greater here, if it's just going to be lane pressure. Seeing this a lot more in the Corky Azir matchup, jungler is not necessarily showing up for the kill. Obviously very difficult to take out the Azir or the Corky. Instead, just there to push out to make sure the Humanoid can get a bit more pressure on the map or a optimal back timing. They could actually potentially look for a dive here as well with that priority. Humanoid's joining. See if Rogue realized. Of course, they got the confirmation with the Predator. Just scaring him. A lot of scaring them, Gang's Poppy Smoothie. No one wanted to commit yet. Splice, obviously, with that first play, but otherwise, taking it nice and slow and just playing for plates. Not a bad choice, given that it uh, looks like both the bot laners will be going for the man immune. Oh, it's a textbook movement. They've got ex control wards three lining up the bot side jungle, so they're able to make the play. No eyes on Humanoid and Xerse. The warning is there, of course, from the Predator. That means Rogue have to pull away. It opens up most of a play. That is the sort of play that I associate with Spice. That's the sort of thing Duke looks at, absolutely nods his head, and appreciates this team, pulls it off perfectly. Doesn't always get you a play, but more often than not, starts up an advantage. Speaking of advantages, we're seeing Rogue actually roam up here. Does get level six first, however. This could be big. Vander a bit higher level as well. Norskaren will not pursue any further. For now, Spice taking good control of the bottom side of the map once again. Waiting for some of these ultimates, but where we really expect to see Rogue making big plays. Finn does hit, have his now on the top side. But otherwise, across the map, a bit of a calm, patient early game from Splice, as expected. Looking to see Rogue go for something bigger, as Xerse is hovering around the mid lane. If you're wondering why Xerse is spending mo so much time around mid lane, it's really about timings. Remember, first package access is at 8 minutes and TP advantage for Humanoid. Larson is trying to go for a preemptive second back in order to just have items to fight. But he's been cooped up in mid this entire time. No way for him to counter roam. So as I shows his head, and bloodlessly, Spice is stacking up turret plates. Yeah, just a few pays for them themselves. Inspired, though, now coming in. See if they overstay their welcome. But instead, we'll just be the focus on clearing out the vision. And eyes on the mid lane. Yesterday, Papa, Humanoid, we don't have to beat around the bush. He got absolutely smashed yesterday. And today, we can see him taking a more of a back step, playing the more meta in Quirky. And I think it's a good look, because we can see what happened yesterday when he did get shut down, and it was pretty catastrophic for And Spice. I'm just loving the team play they've done to shut down Larson's back. On the minimap, I could see Larson tried to Shifting Sands into the Raptor Pit to back to again get that back against TP and soon to be packaged. Corky couldn't do it, got interrupted again. So Azir is finally on that recall. Corky straight back in. They want this Drake. It's a free Drake for Splice because Larson has been so heavily punished in the mid lane with his early teleport. And on top of that, the package for Humanoid as well. Just a looming threat that has to be respected. We'll now return to the mid lane, but Splice playing this game slow and steady. They know Rogue has the potential to build massive advantages here in the early to mid game, and they're not giving them a single inch. Playing around things like TP advantage and package timing are not always cornerstones to victories, but they are bloodless ways to get a lot of power. It's mostly team power. It hasn't helped him in the 1v1 lane CS, but has helped his team. Is Here's the charge. Ulti coming in. Skarner going to get sped up on the backside. GP has to be careful. Using orange is going to be crucial, but the flash out will take him to safety. Finn demounted. Needs to respect the parlays to come. Is he going to go down here? Humanoid on the top side. Package incoming, but Inspire has the ultimate. If he stays for too long, he's going to get pulled into the tower. Finn going to look for a chance to remount. Can he get it? But no. Burning, bleeding, but will not go down yet. Cersei on the way in. Wants to get this one out with the ultimate. Finn, is he focusing? Is he in the shop? It's not going to be. Oh! Light him up and knock Sometimes it lines up. There's the strike you're looking for. That bowling was sublime in the top side there. Really big play coming through from Spice. And that package timing, yes, at the start, it looks like it was going to bait him into a turret misplay. But overall, Spice read the right script, got top, and got maximum value. And you called it in the pick ban phase, Papa Smith. You talked about the level six, the potential for a, a lane like Kled to take off. Splice, as you said, read the script. They knew it was coming, and they played around it. Something you have to give him credit for. Now we take a look at Xerxes' pro view as he goes for a, a happy double here. I think most junglers just ult the low health Kled and pick up a single kill. But they're actually, to kind of connect 2 plus 2, they're the only place to defensively flashes towards the ally who's going to die to AoE. 
was well read by Zerse. Really nice play from him, and now he profits an AP. Gragas can be an insane mid-game damage threat if you can get those early pen items and really get going. It's something you always have to respect for Zerse, a guy who's never afraid to go for or make the big play. Donating the blue buff now over to Humanoid, which can keep him in lane a bit longer, but now we're seeing Rogue send three member, members rather to the mid lane. They're just going to move in now and push for a bit of vision, trying to get those small advantages while they have time to do so, but Will they be able to use this vision? North Scaring now stepping up. Will Light there as well. Rogue definitely setting up for a play, but Will Light give away at least. I know what he's at. Humanoid just dashing right out. Rogue definitely eager to force the play. Won't lose much for the attempt, but not going to get anything out of it. Are they feeling pressured? Remember what our draft analysis was. This is the sort of time where we're expecting Rogue to kick into gear and try to punish before the scaling comes in. Well, scaling comes 3,000 gold ahead, and the 3 to 0 is going to be very readable by Rogue every time they press tab. So. Feeling a bit like they have to make the play, going for plays that are easily scouted. Corky has no issues disengaging plays like that. And even if you look at the execution of the top lane gank attempt that we saw, wasn't in the replay, but it was kind of a overzealous attempt because oranges are still up and there's no real way to force that and get the Skarner impale. Just wasn't going to happen likely and was turned around so easily by Splice. So. Watch the bot side. Now the play on the bot side. Will I get to take a lot of damage? Oh, Ford from Kabe now going to dash out. Not going to be charmed up now, but into the big trouble for Banner now. Leaning this is here. Barrage comes out. North Scare taking the tower. The ignite goes down. Big Ezreal up, but no, another cast. Zerse sniping him out left and right. North Scare will give his life in the exchange. Big kill going over to Finn, but otherwise a bloody dive on the bottom side. And look how many resources had to be used to stave off. If just being another two kill play, the one for one requires the teleport investment and now turret plates to a gangplank while Corky is hitting in the mid lane. The cost of this play is way more than the one for one and kills. I hear the charge. Charging away. That's the retreat. Oh boy. Definitely not the ideal use, but already we saw in the gold graph moments before that play happened how far ahead Vizachachi was ahead of everyone else on the map. All these tower plates are going to make that go from bad to worse. Gangplank, we always talk about him. He's scaling. He's mid to late game, potentially as an option, but early Trinity Force here is going to make it miserable for Finn to enter this lane. Four tower plates, and this minion wave needs to be cleaned before it gets the turret. It's got a single digit health, so this is a really, really big moment for Vizachachi with no jungle attention. Picked up this much of a CS advantage. Rogue going for a counter lane swap, just trying to make efficient use of time and not just be completely in great depths because of the TP disadvantage that Visachachu was under. Humanoid also has been able to get plenty of gold in mid lane. In fact, gold lead almost 4,000 already. Spice looking very, very comfortable already for Rogue. We talked about how they would have wanted to play the mid game. That's looking super tricky. Kind of the only happy moment for them is that none of this early gold lead has been invested into QSSs yet. On the side of Splice, Splice themselves gonna make a play to the Rift Herald, but I don't think Rogue are in any position to contest it. No, absolutely not. You're looking across the itemization everywhere, and you can see leads for Kabe, despite similar itemization, already has the Athian Reign upgraded very early into the game, on top of an Infernal Drake as well. Make it that much easier to come out on top in these fights, and. Things only go from bad to worse. Against a champion like Nautilus and Gragas, you really do not want to fall behind because it is so easy for them to get plays kicked off. However, we might see a collapse on the top side. More importantly, Larson in the mid lane is going to push Corky back into the tower. Humanoid is going to take a tower shot. A lot of damage now coming in. Larson can't he get it. Has to back off. Zerse going in for one more. The casks just keep coming. Four kills for Zerse. Even in the mid lane, things don't go the way of Rogue. Larson trying to make a solo play easily answer because Zerse was in that side of the map. And wherever you go, you're kind of damned if you do and damned if you don't. If you try to attack the bot lane, well, it's already a CS disadvantage. They've tried that before. If you go top lane, the Gangplank Ultimate and TP advantage is there for Visitachi. And even in the mid lane, Zerse had been hanging between top and mid lane, made the right read that it could be potential action. Now, insult upon injury, goodbye mid lane turret, and side lanes are soon to fall. Finn paying that respect. The Predator once again kind of looming over his head, telling him back away That's from a this tower. Discrepancy. Ooh, Papa. And we set up win conditions for Rogue, but uh, honestly, Spice have just outclassed at this stage in the early game. And Rogue just have not gotten a single opportunity to, to play their game. They definitely kind of overforced a little bit in the early game, and that was turned against them. And you do lose your rights to make plays to comp like Rogues against a scaling drop. If you fall too far behind in gold and you're just outclassed in terms of your weapons, or if you can't set up some sort of mobile. Uh, control ward line and force Splice to face it or prey upon a big mistake from Splice because Splice is taking every objective on the map.
It's not a perfect game. There is a single kill to Rogue, but everything else is all splice. And when you look back, this doesn't feel like the most explosive game. Cersei has obviously had some highlight moments, but it felt a bit slow early on. However, when you look at the gold, you see the real story of the game, the story of what those plates get you, because it is about an 8K gold lead 15 minutes in for Splice. It may not have felt like domination for the first five minutes, but after that, Splice have been in total control. And that's why, again, it will be a matchup that causes plenty of sleepiness, the Corky versus Azir, but a lot of my excitement about how this game was played was in that matchup, particularly around Larson using early teleport. Corky not matching it, getting back to lane, and then Cersei and Humanoid spending all of their time denying Larson from ever getting another recall. Timings like eight minutes for the package first spawn, TP advantages. Those were so well taken advantage of that a lot of the game was decided bloodlessly and in the minimap rather than in terms of on camera action. And you can see Splice, obviously, when they are able to build leads like this, when they're able to oh, fly yeah. out the early game cleverly, they just win. 5-0 record, looking to make it 6-0. And this is their largest gold lead at 15 minutes ever. It is kind of a surreal stat for a team that's contending for second and third place that's played 13 games to only have a gold lead at five minutes. But it is very explainable by, have you watched Splice? That's not really how they look to play. They don't look to attack the early game. But if they read their opponents, like Origin was very famous for doing in spring season, you do get games like this where they were ahead of what Rogue wanted to do before Rogue even crystallized the point. And the end result of that is a 7,700 gold lead. And the game, in many ways, if we're going to trust our own analysis and champion select, already really being out of the grasp of Rogue being able to find a victory. And with a player like Larson on your team, maybe you can hope for out executing in late game team fights. But honestly, that is Splice's bread and butter. And we look at yesterday, we said, hey, both these teams coming off rough games, some they both need to shrug it off heading forward. Splice definitely looking much cleaner, much more controlled than what we saw yesterday. Rogue still showing some of the same signs of struggle. So what do you do as Rogue? What do you have and how can you potentially use it against the enemy team is what you have to do. And it's again, has to be reactive now because the game hasn't gone your way. You still have Skarner versus no QSS targets. This is a uh, very, very deep chase on the Humanoid. This is the story of a game in a nutshell. Exactly. What I love, for example, though, is the lane ward you see on the top lane that comes out from Spice. Lane wards like that are the sort of wards that the charge can potentially catch someone on. So aggressive lane wards, the lane ward that we just saw there into the bush next to inner turret before even outer turret and top lane has gone down. Those are smart. There are ways that you can use Skarner Ultimate and delete someone. You still have good damage and mobility on your team and QSS is nowhere to be seen on the enemy team. Only the, the only effect they have is, of course, on the GP. And speaking of, now Finn is going to be in trouble. Lockdown after shock. Proc needs to run away, but can't be disabled. Honestly, well played there. Good knowledge of the range. Did not get re-tethered to an enemy champion. So Finn will be able to walk away. A lot of resources burned on the side of Splice, but ultimately still far enough ahead that will not matter too much. TP, though, now coming in. Humanoid may have overstayed this is play we're talking about. Wants to go over the wall. He's just going to get pushed right back. Inspired's got the CC. Larson's got the damage. Is it going to be enough? Humanoid is still alive, however. Is going to get the shutdown in the end. And a nice pickup for Rogue. Yeah, really good look from them. We talked about deep wards. We talked about lane wards. We talked about catches. That's the sort of catch that if you're not going to go for QSS, if you're going to go for more into the... Trinity Force or Hex Drinker so far, that is a sort of punishment you can take. It doesn't change the flow of the game. It doesn't get the game into Rogue's hands, but it does mean that all their wards topside have turned into something. They're not just wasted gold. And additionally, it shows us that they are willing to make those high-risk plays. Because remember, look at how many resources were invested there as we go back into ProView and check this one out. A good push back, but if this went wrong, it would have put them even further down. But good confidence to make the play. And unsurprisingly, yes, folks, the Azir pushed a W and auto attacked a lot. There was a Q in there, too. The alt, though, at the start really was what was special. Hey, Azir never really works as a solo Q champion. The win rate is always super low, so I'm sure someone learned something from that. <laughs> Cersei, for once, not ahead of a play. And that is something that he's, of course, probably going to kick himself about a little bit. They're going to try to recontrol the top side of the jungle. You can't control everywhere. You can't put down uh, unlimited control wards like Mata's heyday in 2014. And, of course, map movements can be easily answered with cross maps. But recontrol for Spice top side. And to their credit, they're controlling when the Baron is spawning. And that's, of course, when top side control gets even more important. Absolutely does. And as we check in on the itemization, Ezreal finally able to hit that two item point we were talking about earlier. Of course, Kaisa matching, but has not hit the fully upgraded Mora Mana yet. And will not get the second evolve until she gets a bit more items under her belt. And it's a timing where you might be zero and two, you might be down 40 CS, but the quirk of Ezreal's cheap build is he's stronger than Kaisa right now in most scenarios. It's not one to one, but it is 
one of those things. We have the stat in the LCK that I've been liking a lot. Damage per gold spent. A kind of an effectiveness of your gold spent. And Ezreal lies around 130 to 140%, which is obviously insane. But just how much he abuses items like Ice Bomb Gold and Muramana. But unfortunately, the map control is something that Spice is able to abuse. They're happy to just mobilely move their control ward line. No one dares to walk out. The charge would have to be invested largely into darkness. And they'll take a second Infernal, no worries. And that is insult to injury, especially going up against the double carry threat, the triple carry threat if you look at Vizichachi as well. And honestly, the quadruple carry threat if you look at the four Magi stack, Gragas in the jungle for Xerxes. So Splice only continue to get more and more terrifying. And Rogue, that window of opportunity you talked about, the Ezreal two items, Zier's kind of getting there soon, but the window appears to be closing short. And the reason why we're so confident mid to late game about Splice is the Corky becomes an Infinity Edge car carry. We know how much burst on an isolated target a Kai'Sa can do. No one on Rogue is going to build enough resist in order to walk up an answer as Finn actually follows here. Now stepping forward, Humanoid has overstayed his welcome on the bottom side. Ooh, but no, the Blast Conan, no! Oh, frustrating, but here we go. Let's Tonight, follow it. The moment. I the choose to believe, picture. Draco. Can he get Whoa. it? No! A heartbreaker. Well played, Observers. I believed for a brief second. But it won't happen, Papa. And that's... Humanoid's gone a couple of walkies too much on this Corky Corky yeah. and uh, been taken down. Yeah. He should wait his turn. He should wait for walkies. Yeah, the classic walkabout. He's, he's having a good old time. Uh, over pushing lanes on the bottom side. It does mean that Finn's gonna get a bit more time uncontested on the bottom. Maybe able to break this bottom tier one, but now a TP to the top side. Splice wants to up the tempo. They want to get a little bit more control. Rogue, though, smell blood in the water. Seeing an opportunity with two members committed top side to get something done. Zerse, though, a player that has to be respected. The tier two will drop. Humanoids teleport expended, and we might just see Splice start to contest the Baron here. I actually really like the teleport there. Yes, it was likely Gangplank was gonna get the turret anyway, but the moment that you see a Predator pop from this fed Gragas and two members topside, you're not contesting any of this vision in your red side jungle. You're losing it in a turret. You're trying to play where you can see. They're gonna go for this outer turret, but this could definitely be a timing attack from Splice. And Barrage trying to shepherd them in, backing off Melee Bander on the retreat. Now it's firing, however, will be locked at the chain CC under the support, but it's coming into the backside. So much damage, Vision Chachi is there as well, but now it's Humanoid 2. It's a split attack. The Pinsir is collapsing, but Kabe oversteps and goes down. He'll take out larger than the progress, though. Overall, still a win for the team, and Vander, oh, he's just next to the list. Cersei chasing him down, waiting for an opportunity to go in, but will be forced to back off. There are fights everywhere, folks, but Splice continue to come out on top. Finn trying to get more damage down, wants to remount desperately, cannot afford to get hit again. Buying a bit more time, that bar is so close to finishing. Stepping forward for the auto attack, will remount. Vision Chachi may have overstepped. His welcome now, the turn and burn coming through. Visit Chachi, though, the Sterix Prox will back away, but this spot, top laner, 1v1 on the bottom side jungle, won't amount to much. The Flash wants to get a bit more, never mind, he's gonna get it, and that's the shutdown. And this is why you do not give Finn this champion, however, it's too little. It's too late. Splicer there for the cleanup, and Corky will grab the mid-tier two in the meantime. And you need to update some of those League of Legends core rules that used to be never chase Singe. Don't brawl with a Cled for that long. The remount's always going to get you, especially after the Q buff means your heal will be void. Going to watch the replay, and Splice had the ability to come from all angles because they had made that teleport play. They controlled so much of map vision. They come from all angles, and yes, Kobe is taken. He is too bold. We assumed it was just going to be cleanup crew and easily for Splice, but they don't kill Vander. He does get over the wall. And Finn, to his credit, at least takes someone to the grave with him. And now a 10k gold lead for Splice. Obviously nice to have some of those kills. Finn doing a lot of damage in that 1v1 exchange, but overall Splice still very much in control. Double Dragons on top of a 10k gold lead in frontals, that is going to make it hard. But the GP ult, the big difference maker there, is that kicked off the fight and additionally the damage he does doesn't matter, though. That's what they don't understand from the graph, Papa Smithy, is it looks like GP did 5k damage. That's so impressive. But the question is, how much of that damage hit Skarl versus how much of that damage hit Clay? Look, if you're going to be particular, probably quite a bit, Dracos, <laughs> on that one. The gold dis dis difference, though, has only been going in one direction, being ri just rising, rising, rising. It's cresting upon 10,000 gold very soon. One thing I want to draw your attention to when we get back to the standard overlay is that you know, I, I was the one to coin the reverse legendary for people who aren't doing so well with 0-8-0 score lines. We actually have the reverse secret agent going on the Gragas. He has seven kills and nothing zero. else. Yeah. This is an AP Gragas that is Shushe style, and there's an LEC-related reference right there now. This is one that's going to blow people up like those nerfs years ago never happened. <laughs> I miss those days. The ratios were terrifying if you didn't play in that era of Gragas. He was a horrid champ. 
And Zerstay reminding us, 16 stacks, as you already said. License to kill, no doubt. He may just set his sights here on the mid lane. Eyes on the cast. Where is he going to go? We'll hold on to it for now. Splice really under no pressure to try to force any kind of play. Can look to set up this Baron and make Rogue come to them. Andre goes 007 is the license to kill. Keep on. This is a license to seven thrill. Zero, zero. Coming license through from this thrill. one. I mean, they don't kill anyone if they're 007, though, Papa. That's. Well, we're James Bond has a body count. What are you talking about? Speaking of body counts, I think there's going to be a boss here eventually. Rogue desperately want to find an but entrance. This is definitely not the fight that they wanted. Clyde now kicking off to the front line. The North Karen might just be in trouble, but it's coming to the backside. That's so much damage. But instantly now gets deleted. Clyde doing what he can to turn this one back. But Humanoid is popping off in this fight. It's two quick kills. Finn next on the list. I don't think he's going to get a chance to remount this time around. Goodbye to the Clyde. The triple for Humanoid and the Baron for Splice. Big turn available for Splice. And you see how this new age Kaiser pick works. When you you have Corky in the mid lane. You don't have to play like you're the only damage dealer. Go in the back line. Do it all yourself. Assassinate a couple, and then Corky gets to walk around with an Infinity Edge and clean up the low health members even after your death. And Kabe, the front, <laughs> honestly, the front line Kaisa, as we take a look back at this play, but overall, well executed from Splice. We're in a meta where there isn't that many real backline access champions. Yes, sometimes Kled can be that, but Mal Malphite is the prototype of that, right? It's fun how Kaisa, in certain comps where she doesn't need to be the hard carry of every fight, the cleanup crew, can also be something of an initiator. This fight stalls out if Kaisa doesn't dive in there. And because the health bars are so low, and so many ults are used to try to either mop up the Kaisa or try to deal with her, guess what? Corky just gets to free auto attack with an Infinity Edge, and it turns out that works pretty effectively as well. <laughs> when you have two carries, why not give up one to burn every single defensive cooldown or offensive cooldown the enemy has. And now more than just 10k, Papa. It's a 20 stack Magi's and a 13k gold lead for Splice. This is, they're just putting on a show. And that's a page turner from Xerxes. I'd like to borrow that book. Check it out the library <laughs> afterwards because it seems like a great read. He is, uh, yeah, very, very strong with double pen as well. Rogue at this point just have too many different types of itemization required to deal with this very high mixed damage profile. And it turns out that sentence, very high mixed damage profile, it sequels victory most of the time because no items will deal with it. They're going to try an emergency charge, but Norskaren heads it off before it gets to an ally. Well played by Norskaren with the body block there. Wool Light. When did that? Happen? I don't know, but he almost died. Definitely not where he wanted to be. And now the lockup onto Inspired, but we'll pull him back into the base. That works. All right. Pulls him through, and now he goes down. That's a Skarner special if I've ever seen one, but the tower will be the price paid. So a good kill pickup, but maybe not a drastic shutdown that they were hoping for. It turns out in mobile stasis, you don't have to respect the laws of those base gates. So it's at least going to be a bit of a delay, I would assume onto Spice's win push that it feels like. And then have to back away. Take a mountain, Drake. Prep themselves for the next Baron. It's going to be a while from now. Not blowing our minds with the Baron buff power play gold so far, but it's all in the right direction. And it turns out, if you've got a lot of standing gold before the Baron, there's only so many realistic objectives you're going to take, unless you're just ending the damn game. Yeah, always going to be difficult to break open the base, but we can uh, look back at what exactly happened here. This is after the ulti was body blocked, and. Thank you for, for the replay, and Norskaren, of course, thinking walls would save him. Rookie mistake. Instantly just gets deleted. If you're not familiar, if you haven't played the game in many years, you cannot, as an enemy, walk through the allied base gate, the rogue base gate in that case, but it appears that if you are Skarna suppressed, you get to join <laughs> in on the party. So he got through the front door. You know, he didn't have to knock. If they put you in a body bag, you're allowed to go through the gate. That's what we've learned. Humanoid, though, and the rest of Splice now grouping on the top side. They already broke down that bot side tower. Yes, it's not super creeps, but it will demand a bit more attention. Inspired, trying to hold on to whatever jungle he can. No, 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 no. He doesn't have a jungle. He, you know, there's like, there's just nothing that he that he yeah. gets to control in this map. There's no brush, unfortunately, for him to stand in in his own base. At this point, he gets to sadly sweep wards between inhibitor turrets, and that's all you get to do. That is the life of a Skarner. <laughs> I miss my kind. <laughs> Takes an opportunity. He found a bush, Papa, and he lives there now, and no one can take that away from him. Thank you, Observers, for the dramatic zoom in. Uh, sadly, I don't know if Splice are too concerned about that particular bush. They've got their eyes set on the Nexus, and now... Ooh, all YOLO eyes play. On the Kled. He's going nowhere. But it looked cool. You can't take that away from him. It is the essence of YOLO, but it doesn't pay off in that regard. They're going to just erect the Sun Turret in mid lane to try to have somewhere to try to fight around, but unfortunately, none of this gets them closer to 
the objectives they want. For example, contesting the Baron in two minutes. How are you ever going to get a control ward there with some sort of Herculean backdoor ward? Not a backdoor kill or end of game. Peke watching on would not be impressed, but <laughs> the best they can hope for. Blue trinkets on cooldown for now. Should both be up by the time the Baron spawns, but that's the best they got. As Spice just looks to break the base here. Looking to do it as tutorial as possible. It is very much their way they like to play. One step at a time, and uh, no reason to risk anything here. Definitely respecting the Clyde more as these fights have gone, or fights have gone on. Will I opting, interestingly, for the Ludens as we see the AP Ezreal build start to transition more and more here in the LEC, and maybe, maybe you have the dream of landing that mm. burst combo. Always a threat with AP Ezreal, potentially Gunblade next, but Scaling Baron also true. Uh, bit of a, it feels like a bit of a pipe dream at this point, but maybe, just maybe, we can make it happen for now. Those Splice set their sights with the mid lane, and no one on the rogue side oh. is really in position to stop that. So 50% of the tower's health deleted in an instant with no response from rogue. Yes, yeah, very straightforward for them. Look at the control ward line from Splice. It's effectively choking every jungle camp away from the enemy. They actually control all of the enemy's jungle. You have noted already that there was the one brush that they got access to. Well. Rogue's going to try to reclaim it. But if that's where you're planting your flag on the map, <laughs> turns out you're getting the gold that Spice decides to push into you and nothing else. They're waiting. Someone will make a mistake, Papa Smithy, and walk into that brush. I don't know who it's going to be, but I think it's, it's going to happen. I guess someone went to the base of Mount Everest and put a flag down. Like, it's mine! <laughs> Never I, decided to take any single this. incline I of the mountain. I showed up at Mount Everest. <laughs> Participation medal. <laughs> hey, plenty of those. For Rogue, though, I mean, they, they, sadly for them, this is it. Now they've gotten a bit more control of a few more brushes, a bit more than just the base of Mount Everest, but it is still an incredibly uphill climb for this team. Once again, hoping and praying, I think, to fish for an opportunity. Look, all I'm going to say is no one remembers the first person to visit Mount Everest. <laughs> no, the first person who went, wow, that's a tall mountain. That's that's pretty much all we've got going here. But they're trying to just pile in as many resources as possible. They're happy that there's no inhibitor down in the bot side. Even this will be too tricky to do if they had minion pressure. Speaking of minion pressure, that is what is being done by Humanoid. He has his teleport. You just feel, though, that even though there's a single QSS and the oranges onto the GP, do they actually have enough damage on the side of Rogue to kill the first person they suppress with the available targets? And we also have the Zanyas coming in from the Gragas as well as just an absurd amount of damage with raw AP, a QSS coming in on the Kai'Sa. So the options are available are now, limited, but watch bottom here. side, that's an unstoppable Humanoid and an alting Play. Where are we going? Uh, what are we doing? Team. Oh, they're going to stop that one. Humanoid now debating. Larson not entirely sure if he wants this 1v1. Bit of a comedy of errors there. And now Humanoid will get taken down in the end, though. Big shutdown. The rest of the team debating if they want to start the Sparing, though. Taking a bit of time, however, means Inspire will be able to walk up to the pit. The body block coming in for Visit Chachi. Kabe obviously shredding through this one incredibly quickly. Eyes on Inspire. Can he take this one away? But it's not even going to matter. The Arcane shift down from Moonlight. The Cannon Barrage now coming down. He's trying to heal up as much as he can. Baron at 3k health and dropping. No, they're holding it there. They have to debate what their options are. The lockup is there. Lock down the jungler. Take the Baron. It's clean from Splice. Vizichachi now going to back off here. Has to be careful. Kabe in harm's way. Needs to get away. Vizichachi may be the sacrificial pirate. Does flash over the wall. The TP now committed as well. Rogue walk away empty handed. Baron gonna be taken by Spice. Everyone knew their role on that Baron take. Noskaren waiting until the Baron was in kill range to flash over, be Nautilus with his four forms of CC, and make sure there was no chance, even with flash up, that Inspired could contest the pit on the Skarner. They pick up the big buff. Gorky has to pay the price, does go down in all of the hullabaloo, but it is Baron for Spice exactly what they wanted, and that death push, it was delayed for a little while. I think it's on the way now. Last potential stand, of course, not just a death brush, but a death cap for Xerse. He has just a disgusting amount of oh, AP, yeah. and I feel like in the midst of two carries, we've kind of forgotten, forgotten about how strong this Gragas is, but uh, obviously just disgusting. That's 811 AP, folks. Um, 811 AP, <laughs> Gragas. To give you an idea, let's try to work out what an R does alone. Just his ultimate is 968 damage. Yeah. The uh, Ezreal has no magic resist. You get hit by a body slam too, and we're talking near lethal range already. So, there's some fun times yeah, coming. Yeah, it's a, this is the horror movie. If you've got your pro view, the... you know who to move your POV to. It's yeah. Xerxes AP it's, it's, Yeah, He's a big deal. 100%. And now, oh, they took the flag off the base of Mount Everest. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> 
Uh, the break in the Midland Tower, though, will come through. Splice, at this point, expected to just close it out. The Rock, gold advantage on top of everything else. Spy the flash before they want to lock up the Corgi. Maybe they can keep him down. He got to take it out. This is the fight the Rogue we're looking for. Venom, he gets to the backside. He won't get a chance to remount, though. Larson's still alive. Will still alive. North Garen pushes forward. Makabe gets pushed back. Larson will get a few, but not quite enough to keep this going. All eyes on Woolite. The last remaining catch. Oh, the but there it is. The body slam from Gragas. The double kill for Kabe, and it's going to be a win for Splice. And with that, right here. Splice will lock themselves a place in the playoff, look towards the top two, and get one for Fnatic as well. Why not, they say? We can help you out. Super clean performance here by, from Splice. They don't kill the Skarner, but they definitely chopped off some of those limbs earlier because the poor Skarner couldn't get to his jungle camps. Splice controlled a mid-game that Rogue needed to seize if they were going to be able to win this game. And we know this has big implications as well, Dracos. That does mean that Splice and Fnatic are rubber stamped for playoffs. Exactly where you want to be. We've heard from a lot of players, of course, as we get closer to playoffs, pressure starts to mount, teams start to make mistakes. So the comfort of knowing that you have locked a spot has to be nice for both those squads. Now the question remains, who will get the second seed? The first seed as well as G2 aren't confirmed, although many expect them to be. And I think a lot of fans will look at this Splice performance and say, aha, this is the Splice I remember. This is the Splice I predicted to beat Excel yesterday, but it didn't come to be. And I think Splice sometimes in the early game give up a lot, don't really have a plan to win something early. It's very much else victory, which is what this game was about. But they don't have Xerxes path, and they don't have smart early game plans to shut down enemy win conditions, but also get themselves something. Because they got rolling so early that our biggest points of discussion was Mount Everest and how much ability power <laughs> the Gragas jungle had. Those are the most relevant uh, things in this game. You know, it and is... that just shows you that Splice got it together early and made it basically a game state where Rogue couldn't realistically find a victory. It's sad, but it's true. And now I respect Rogue for trying to operate under those kind of time-sensitive win conditions. I always think it's, it's better than just kind of conceding and trying to match late game scaling with late game scaling. But when it goes wrong, it goes so beautifully wrong in the sense that the team just doesn't really get to interact anymore because they're just strictly weaker. And I, I completely agree with you because I think Rogue, when they've lost Olaf, have sometimes been a bit kind of without really a lot of vibe about their drafts and unable to play that into a game state that suits them. I will say that I was more convinced by this draft than, for example, what we saw yesterday when we saw Schalke try to run the AP cannon when on hit cannon, yes, it doesn't work in Europe, but would have given them a split push win condition. I looked at a draft like that and I was like, huh, I don't really see without mistakes from the enemy how you win this game with the draft you have. At least here, we saw timings where potentially Rogue could have overtaken the game, but to Spice's credit, those timings came too late because they played so well in the early game. Man, at the end of the day, a confident win coming in from Spice, but now we didn't know who is your Kia player of the game. At Lolly Sports on Twitter is the place. Visit Chachi's or say, and Humanoid are your choices. Question, second question, who had 811 AP as a Gragas? Uh -huh. A related question. A related question, yeah. Um, and I think it might also answer your... Which one is easy to... Yep, yep, nailed it. Look at you. That one. Yep, Look yep. at the screen. And of course, after the break, we're going to have an interview with Duke nice as hair. well. We can see. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> that's the first time anyone's done it. That's, uh, that's, that's nice. I'm having fun here on the LEC stage, Dracos. I love it. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we will be back with our fourth game right after this. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back shortly. Cersei on the way in. Wants